Hello and welcome once again to Solo Board Gaming Presents Heart of Darkness, an adventure game of African exploration from Legion War Games and designed by Kim Kanger. Uh, this is our third video. Uh, the first one was uh, a review, overview of the whole game. You can get a good idea of the whole game from that video. If you haven't already watched it, you could pop back and take a look at that overview. Uh, the uh, second video was the setup and we've set up our game and we're ready to go uh, taking our uh, expedition into the heart of the continent. Uh, otherwise, the map at the moment, once I remove this box, is exactly the same as we left it after the setup video. Um, one thing I have done is, uh, because we chose our resources from our resource pool, and I've turned the rest of the pool those that I didn't choose over onto the blank side, except for the guide and the canoes. I'm already thinking now, by the way, when I chose those resources, I wish I'd chosen a guide. Uh, I didn't, and I'm not going to change it now. We'll leave it exactly as it is. So let's take away this uh, very nice box cover. Um, and one of the first things we're going to do now is uh, address the turn track. So we've turned the camera to the turn track here. It's in the bottom right hand corner of the map. It goes from one to seven. Um, so there's uh, enough spaces there for one counter from each of five players, plus ta -da, the horror marker, which is your sanity, and the disease marker, which is your health. So first of all, we'll place the disease marker and we do that by simply rolling a D6 and we've rolled a three. Now, because it, I'm playing solo, uh, single-handed, completely solitaire, one expedition, uh, I have to, to take account of potentially other players playing this game, I have to deduct two from the dice roll. So the die roll is actually a one. So I place the disease marker, which is my health, or will be, on the one. The next one I'm going to do is roll for the horror. And this one is going to affect my sanity. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to roll a d6. Oh, I've got a six and I'm going to minus a two, so that's on the four. Now, uh, in a multiplayer game, uh, four or five players, for instance, players will now place their turn markers on the turn track uh, in between here and here, for instance, with the person with the least drama points going in the first spot, then the second one, da 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 da, -da. Um, If any are tied for drama points, then you would determine it some way, die rolls, that kind of thing, uh, randomly to see what order the players go in. Uh, here, of course, there's only me. So now this is where I place my turn marker in the first available slot like so. And you can see what's happened there. Fairly clever mechanic, really. Uh, because I'm playing solitaire, the demand is that I had to minus two from the dice roll. Um, it's fairly certain that at least one of these markers is going to end up, well, certainly a 50% chance on the number one spot. And my turn marker is going to be below it. So the turn order then is uh, carried out at the beginning of every game turn. Then we have the map phase, which we're going to cover now. Then we have all the player turns and so on, backwards and forwards. End the game turn and we come to a new game turn. So that's the time when we do that again. So it's just the beginning of each game turn. 
uh, to determine our start order and if we're going to make any health or sanity rolls. Now, because my marker ended up below the disease marker, I have to make a roll against my health. So I'm going to do that now on the D6, and it's a 6. Now, quite simply, uh, if that die roll uh, is equal to or less than my health, I lose a health. It's actually above my health. Look, my health is at 5, so I don't lose any health. Now, there are modifiers that you use. If your sanity is greater than your health, and when you make a sanity roll, if your health is greater than you, your sanity, there are die roll modifiers. In this particular case, uh, there's nothing. I had to make the roll because my turn marker ended up below the health marker. I don't have to make a sanity roll because my turn marker is above the horror marker. So I made the uh, uh, health roll and the health roll was above my, start, uh, my starting health. Therefore, I do not reduce my health. That's a good result. And that's the first time uh, and this would be the fourth game I've played of this solitaire. The first time that I haven't lost any health on the first turn. So that's a bit of luck for me there. Uh, right, the uh, setup video. Uh, the nature of setups is it's a bit dry because you go through the motions of setting up and it's pretty well explained within the rules anyway. Uh, but there you go, we've done it and now we are on to... Uh, our first proper game turn. I'm going to move the camera, zoom in a bit, and uh, let's go on our expedition into the heart of darkness. Okay, so once each game turn, the next thing we have to do uh, is feed our team. We've got to feed the Ascari, we have to feed the porters, etc., etc. We've got the food. Uh, remember, I bought additional food at the beginning, well, oh, that mark has moved a bit there. There we go. Now then, so the first thing we do is determine uh, how many porters and Ascari we have. We have eight Ascari, we have eight porters, 16. That's going to cost me 16 food. Uh, and 16 from 40 is 24, he said very confidently. So, we move our marker down to 24, 20, 4, like so. And you can see how quickly that food went down. Now you get why. With my resource points, of which we had 20 at the beginning, uh, we bought uh, uh, 20 additional food. Because now we have how many food left? We have 24. So the good thing is we fed our guys. If we fail to feed, because uh, we always feed Ascari first. If we only had enough to feed these guys and we couldn't feed all of these guys, we couldn't feed all of them, then our discontent would go up by one. If we, could, if we couldn't uh, feed even our Ascari, our discontent could go up by two. There are some mitigators there. Um, but there you go. So make sure you've always got enough food. Keep your discontent down. Uh, that's an important part of the game. The next thing we're going to do is actually make a move on the map. Let's look over here. Uh, here's our explorer. We're still in the coastal area in this savannah land here. Um, we fed our expedition and we're about to make a move. There are several choices available. I said several, is it just two? Let me have a look. So any area bordering this uh, coastal area here, I can move into. So I can either choose to move into this area of Congo or Kimbundu, Kimbundu, here, like so. There's the border just there. Both areas are assumed and it's an assumption at this stage to be savannah, just as the coastal area itself is savannah. 
So do I move into here or do I move into here? I think I'll move into here because it's also a water zone. Any area that has a section of river in it is a water zone. So this uh, river coming out here into the Congo area, uh, and it's actually a river fork, that makes Congo area a water zone. Kimbundu does not have a river flowing into it, not at the moment anyway, um, so it's not a water zone. So I think our choice is here for Congo. And we're actually going to make our first move. Our first move uh, of our uh, exploration of the continent. The other thing to remember, or to note, is that these tribal areas, Kimbundu, Congo, uh, many of them are written in black type. Okay, some are red. This is red, Teke, Mbala, that's red. Bushongo, that's in black, and so on. The areas in red could be less welcoming for us, and only rightly so, uh, because the designer, Kim, uh, has not ducked the fact that uh, uh, even at this late stage in the uh, 19th century and we are virtually at the end of the 19th century here uh, there were still tribal areas greatly affected uh, from exploitation of the indigenous peoples uh, very often in the way of uh, uh, slavery slave workers uh, and particularly this area that we're moving into if we're going to follow the Congo River uh, into the Belgian Congo uh, and the horrors that took place there. The good thing about this kind of game uh, is that it does bring that kind of thing to our attention uh, if, it was, if it wasn't on our radar already uh, and encourages us to take a look at that kind of thing uh, to make ourselves aware of, of the exploitation that did go on. Um, so the designer has pointed this out by making some of these areas red. How it affects us in the game is that the uh, any encounters we have uh, with uh, tribes uh, or, or kingdoms of indigenous people in those areas uh, may be slightly more dangerous because rightly so, uh, they would treat our presence as being very suspect. Um, okay, so that's what we've done. We've moved... Uh, into the Congo. Now we need to find out what kind of uh, uh, terrain we have in the Congo. Remember, printed on the map, it says savanna. So we're looking at our maps. Okay, guys, compass out. We're going this way. We're following the river. Uh, we're okay because there's going to be savanna grasslands and that kind of thing. It's going to be absolutely wonderful. Uh, that's what we know so far. But when we get there, what's the reality? So let's take a quick look. We need to roll a dice. Okay, so we're going to roll a d6. If we get a 1 or a 2 on the die roll, then it will be the terrain that is already presumed. So before I say any more, let's roll that dice anyway to see, to see how, we get, how we come out. Oh no, okay, it's a 3. So anything other than, than a 1 or 2, and it could be something else other than Savannah. Not 100%. We're still looking around. We're mapping this area. So the next thing we're going to do is go to the first of our draw cups. Okay. Now this is the draw cup that has those white counters on it with the coloured shapes. And the coloured shapes uh, match the coloured shapes that are on the borders of our area. So the first thing we're going to do, because we rolled a three, is dip into here. I'm going to pick out one of these counters. Okay, we've got a red triangle. So the next thing I want to do, is there a red triangle on any border here? Oh, I nearly said no, there's not. There it is. <laughs> it's actually where we just came from. Red triangle tells us that this area will be of the same terrain as the area across the red triangle border. 
red triangle border, same terrain. It's going to be, let me just reach across, take a savanna tile. Although it's already there, we're still going to put a savanna tile on top of there. We've confirmed. Now that's a good job. Okay, it's the same, but at least we've gone there and we've confirmed that it's the same. That's quite satisfying. We're mapping this area, we've confirmed it's savanna. Pop that back in there. Da -da 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 -da. Now, by the way, uh, if it had come up with, uh, I don't know, if the shape we picked was the uh, purple splodge, for instance, <laughs> there is no terrain mapped over there. So that wouldn't have told us uh, uh, what terrain to place here. So then there's, there are uh, uh, other steps to take and eventually you will determine the terrain. Uh, and I've noticed after you've mapped four or five areas, um, uh, and that gets quite extensive because you're sort of in the center of the map by then. Um, uh, after you map four or five uh, areas, it actually makes sense because the uh, geography, the terrain tends to change gradually. And that's the idea. That's how it's been designed. So we found Savannah. The next thing we're looking at now is this river fork. Where do each of those forks go? In which direction do they go? Oh, one I nearly forgot. Nearly sold ourselves short. Because we've just mapped this area and it's Savannah, we earn a drama point. Well, of course we do, because we have to report it. We'll be reporting, uh, writing in our journal, that we've discovered a new area and it's Savannah. And for Savannah, we get one more drama point. By the way, uh, if the area had been jungle or desert, we'd have got two drama points because they're much more dramatic. People want to hear about that kind of thing. And we would have lost time doing so. Uh, but we haven't. We're just marching through the Savannah. So now we come to... Uh, yes, the rivers, sorry, I digress there. So where do these river tributaries, tributaries go? This river fork here, where do they go, uh, if anywhere? So we're going to start, we draw uh, to map each of these two forks. So this is uh, a mechanic that we're going to go through twice now, uh, once for each uh, of the arms of the fork. So the first thing I'm going to do is draw for this one. Where's my draw cup? With, ah, here we go. Okay, I'm going to do a blind draw. What do I have? Oh, it's another fork. It's another river fork. Flowing back, uh, uh, downstream, if you like, uh, towards the map, the mouth of of the river. Where am I going to put it? Uh, in which direction was it flowing? Uh, remember, this is this fork here. Um, so let's take a look. This is where we go back to our tub of shapes and multicolored shapes. Draw, draw, draw. What do we have? Red triangle. Now we can't have that because it's not a valley border. A valley border has to be one that is unexplored and is not already a river source. So in that case, the choice comes back to me. I can choose any valid border to place this river fork. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Um, 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 um. I think we will go here. Okay, so that's a river fork coming back uh, towards the mouth of the river. This is the arrow here, uh, downstream towards the river mouth. Mapping, mapping, mapping as we go. And it's not one of the special river counters, so we don't earn any drama points for it, unfortunately. 
Uh, but because we've drawn another river fork, we do take, and this is what they're here for, remember that new sources box in the bottom right with all our generic sources in it? So I take one generic source from that new sources box in the bottom corner and place it in the draw cup, signifying that there's now a slightly improved chance of drawing a generic source uh, from any further river draws. Okay, so that was the first one. Now let's draw for the second part, uh, the second fork, this right hand fork of this river. Let's go. Draw, 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 draw. Draw, 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 draw. Unbelievable. It's another river fork. <laughs> okay, so we'll go and draw from our strange shapes, borders, cups. Oh, and it's a green dot. Uh, it's a green dot. Uh, we don't have a green dot border, do we? What's that one? No, that was the yellow. That's the red triangle. No, we don't. So again, uh, we can choose any valid border. So any valid border, I think, is going to be this one here. Okay, so we've been mapping. Oh, we took another fork. Okay, nearly forgot again. So from our new sources box, we take yet another uh, generic source, plonk it into our cup. Was it that one? Yeah. Like so. Uh, so again, uh, we've taken our first map move, we've mapped the terrain, we've mapped each of the uh, uh, tributaries, tributaries <laughs> coming off of this river here. Uh, one's going into Mbala and Forks again. The other one's going into Kimbundu and Forks again, like so. Um, I think that's a pretty good day's travelling. Um, and we've done okay. It's just worth pointing out, by the way, um, uh, a couple of alternatives. Don't want to get too rules heavy, really, uh, because we actually want to play the game. Uh, but for instance, if we'd have moved into an area with another explorer in it already, we'd have had that Dr. Livingstone, I presume, uh, moment. We'd have that meeting, that shaking of hands, and we'd each earn two drama points uh, from that. We haven't had that. That's okay. Um, if we'd have uh, drawn any uh, uh, special uh, water river tokens, and these aren't special. Uh, these are just ordinary forks. In fact, let me show you here. Here we go. Uh, if we'd have drawn any of the more uh, specialised tokens, marsh, waterfall, uh, mountain source, uh, marsh source, uh, largest lake, lake, that kind of thing. Uh, it would take time to explore them, two time. We would add two drama points because we could write about these great uh, uh, special river discoveries. Um, and we could earn even more drama points if we have surveying and we find a big lake or a largest lake, or if we have altimeter, uh, which we do have, uh, then uh, if we find a mountain source or even a genetic source, we could earn uh, an extra drama point like so. Painting. Because you think, okay, those resources. Painting? What's that for? Well, because if you find a source like this uh, or a marsh like that or waterfalls, of course, you're Victorian. And we could all back then, couldn't we? Uh, get out our easel and oil paints and do a quick painterly sketch. Brilliant. Very exciting. Unfortunately, uh, that didn't happen uh, on this particular turn, but never mind. Um, we will shortly be ready because what we're going to do now, uh, what would happen now, we've ended our uh, initial mapping phase. Uh, before we go on to properly search this area and we'll be searching it thoroughly. But for now, when you've done the terrain and the rivers, 
It's now the next player's turn to do that, the next player, the next player, and so on. Once all the players have done that, that finishes the mapping phase. Okay, and the mapping phase takes place once at the start of every game turn. We now come on to the player turns proper, where our chap here, our explorer, represented over here on the matrix, is going to start properly by using the matrix, exploring this area thoroughly. You think you've mapped it so far? No, you haven't. Many exciting times ahead. Join me in the next video. Thanks very much. Cheers. Bye-bye.